So I'm Caleb Rosenau from Campfire Audio. We're based in Portland, Oregon, and that's where we uh, design and assemble all of our uh, earphones. So today we're introducing um, three new products. One is a refresh of our best-selling earphone, Andromeda. Uh, the second is the all-new version of Polaris, which is a hybrid design. Uh, and the newest addition is the Aya, which is a two balance armature design with a big subwoofer uh, balance armature tied to uh, a small tweeter with our TAEC technology. So all of these new earphones feature a new case uh, that is handmade in uh, Portugal. And then we have a new cable, and so our new smoky uh, lips jacket cable. Okay, and um, tell us, for example, with the Andromeda, what are the changes in the Andromeda? Sure, there are a number of changes with the Andromeda. It, um, here, for example, uh, if you can see this, we can take a look at, at uh, the differences of the older version of Andromeda, which is above here, right? And the newer version, which is below here. Now, there's a number of refinements in the machining uh, and the finish, right? So the machine lines are gone. The spout now is a stainless steel uh, spout. And a lot of the um, really sharp edges, the very you know striking parts have been softened a bit while we retain the general profile of the earphone. Also, you'll notice the MMCX is a new custom MMCX. The same beryllium copper as we've uh, used in the past because it's a very reliable MMCX connector. But here we've just made it round and insulated for uh, aesthetic and reliability. So improved aesthetic and reliability. Uh, additionally, um, the uh, new Smoky Litz jacket cable, you can tell that um, a number of improvements here. You can see the size of the MMCX connector has been greatly reduced. Again, a beryllium copper connector, uh, but much smaller in size, smaller diameter and shorter. So the exit angle from your ear is much shorter, so it will hold tighter to your ear uh, and to your head. And then uh, there's no longer a memory wire. So this is just a um, uh, molded uh, ear hook design. Uh, so this is much softer and um, also much more comfortable than our previous um, memory wire, which was a uh, fixed angle. So to some degree there. Also in the braid itself, so we keep the same silver plated copper uh, Litz conductors, but uh, we've changed the braid from the previous lariat to the new uh, twist, which reduces microphonics and reduces uh, tangling. So it's a much better cable uh, to use on a day-to-day -day basis. Same sound quality because it's the same, the tuning has not changed, it's the same drivers, everything is the same, just improvements in how comfortable it is with accessory. Yes. Uh, up there, um, also carrying case as well. Yes. So it just improvements yes. on an existing very good product. Right, exactly. This is the best time to buy an Andromeda because this is our best, you know, most refined Andromeda to date. Uh, and so, you know, but we've retained its sound that everyone really enjoys. You know. It's very neutral, resolving, you know, enjoyable sound. Um, yeah, a price point of uh, 1100 I think it was. Right? Yes, that's correct. Yeah. Now we can maybe move to the middle product. Sure. The, yeah. The Polaris. Yeah, Polaris is an exciting product for us. Um, again, the new carrying case, the, new, the same smoky Litz cable. Uh, but now we have, um, and then the same, same design with the round MMCX incorporated here. But here we have a black stainless steel spout and uh, the black PVD screws on the face. Here's a port for the dynamic driver. From the original Polaris, we used an 8.5 millimeter dynamic driver. And now we've upgraded to a 9.2 millimeter dynamic driver. 
Uh, and there have been some adjustments to the um, high driver as well from the original Polaris. So this is a much different sounding Polaris. Um, and really, this is a, an exciting sounding earphone. This is a this is like hi-fi with like a subwoofer like present. The bass is very clear, very pronounced, and um, but not bleeding at all into the rest of the sound. Uh, so sound signature wise, how would we compare it uh, against the Andromeda? How would you? No, I would say that it's closer to something like um, like an Atlas with the impact. Some of our more dynamic driver line um, because of that uh, inclusion. So it's really um, it's really a fun sounding earphone. You know, it's uh, just it's got plenty of low frequency response. So if you're looking for low frequency response, it's there. But it also is like plenty of high fi so, I don't know, we, we really like listening to it with, um, like, acoustic jazz, stand-up jazz stuff, as well as, like, hip-hop or modern music, so. Okay, um, price point? Uh, this is uh, $4.99. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, much more affordable than, than Romeo for many So it's for customers that want to get into very good hi-fi sound, yes. but without necessarily going flagship, basically. That's correct, yeah. And I think that this will have an appeal to people that may be different than, um, than some of our other earphones. So uh, especially in the middle of our range, we like to do unique sounding earphones. And I think that people will, um, that if you like this earphone, you're going to love this earphone. Right. And so I think it's for it's for some people who um, are going to really this will really resonate with them. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I I don't know that it's for everyone, but I do know that like it's really fun. So basically, so. fun and exciting. Yeah. Is the the two words that you will use? Basically. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And then the the final um, new product we have is uh, the IO. Uh, this is a really like um, this is a really awesome new earphone. Uh, the it shares a lot of the same you know the shell design. This is a 24 karat gold screw, a stainless steel spout that's slightly longer than the Andromeda spout. So if you take a look here, you can see the fit of the earphone is somewhat um, it's somewhat longer. Uh, so often that will provide a little bit more comfortable uh, fit for some people or secure fit. Um, and it, again, it's a two balanced armature design, but it's m very much more in line with Andromeda's sound signature than many of our others. So it's, it's designed to be sort of a hi-fi sound, but it's also a little bit north of neutral. It's still fun. It's still sort of that campfire sound that sounds open. It sounds enjoyable. It sounds musical. And it sounds like you want it to listen to. In fact, I listen to I.O. a lot working uh, because when I'm at the computer all day, like often the Andromeda can be like very engaging and distracting <laughs> that I find myself just listening to the music uh, as opposed to like getting stuff done. And then the I.O. like is always like is it a really enjoyable listen. It's not a fatiguing listen. It's fun. It's resolving. You can pay attention, but you could also like, you know, so. I, I think it's a really like enjoyable um, uh, earphone, and I think a lot of people are really going to like this. Right. Why did your team release uh, the I.O.? I mean, what was the reasoning behind it? Well, what we're always trying to do is make sure that we have an earphone for everyone, and uh, and oftentimes. Um, you know, not everyone is going to come and buy a $1,000 or $1,500 earphone for their first earphone, right? And so we need a solution for that. And so we design earphones um, to, uh, to appeal to a wider audience, right? And we felt like we could build, design an earphone, we could be clever about some of the, the ways that we approach the problem, and we could get it to a price point without sacrificing the quality of our build, with the quality of our accessories, with the quality of the of the overall experience, uh, you know, this is a full blown campfire audio earphone. It's not like a you know a diminished in any way because it's at a 
at a more approachable price point. I think it's a really fun earphone, and I enjoy it alongside all my other earphones. You know? uh, and like the rest of the Campfire Audio lineup is still assembled in the United States in Portland. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, so. that's right. Yeah, now we're 18 people, so we've grown a little bit uh, since we started. But yeah, we're a small team. Uh, people, yeah, we do all of our design work, all the 3D printing, uh, all of the assembly, all the construction, all the testing, all the pairing, you know, the whole thing, all the boxing, uh, the the full deal. Um, so, you know, we're a, we're a fun team and a small company. So. A growing company. Uh, yeah. And also something fun that we saw was that like, the packaging has changed as well. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, this is a lot of like, um, we wanted to make, you know, as we're, as we're growing, um, we are, it's more important for our boxes to look fun <laughs> and to be like, uh, look okay on a shelf. Because previously, you know, we did a lot of business over the internet, so our packaging, it was important to be, to be restrained and be minimal. And, and we don't like to be wasteful, but here I think we've struck a nice balance. This is all um, uh, printed on uh, this, uh, this American paper company, it's a French, it's called French Paper Company, but it's <laughs> They're, they're American, but um, the, it's the guy's name. So, uh, but it's a really like nice product. It's really uh, the paper itself is dyed so that we don't have to apply any color. So it's a very like it really is the thing, you know. Just like our anodizing, this isn't painted. It's anodized. Like the color is the aluminum, and the same thing here with the packaging. Like this isn't printed red. It is red. Like that's the reality of the thing. And then we do the you know at a, a company nearby uh, our shop, we do all of the foiling and all the cutting of the paper. So this is very much a Portland product. Uh, and so um, I hope people enjoy it, you know, when they get it. I mean, actually, yeah, true. Maybe we could talk a bit like the production process of, of the, I mean, of the in-ears. That they actually handmade, uh, I mean, the way they are produced, maybe. Yeah, sure. So we have a number of um, partners, like, um, around that make uh, our shells and do the various anodizing and plating process. So each model has its own sort of supply chain that goes on, right? Uh, but once we have all of the components, right? So, like, for example, like the Solaris lid is plated nearby, right? Our machine shop for that product is in Southern Oregon, so it's uh, four, five hours down south. Um, but so we do a very careful like inspection for color, for quality, for dings, for um, blemishes of any kind before we build out any of the shells. Um, then we will uh, take our 3D printed um, internals. So the internals of all of our earphones and part of what make them sound so unique and so special and so open is that all of the internals are are modeled, right? So that we have so that we can assemble the drivers in a way that that make them uh, you know connect in a way that's really pleasant and with you know it has a very natural sound to it right and so we're not cutting pieces of uh, PVC and using acoustic dampers and then going to another one right often we're using chambers and the volume of space um, in on the inside of the earphone to perfect the tuning of the earphone I mean of course we use some acoustic dampers as well and the crossover designs um, but a lot of that is informed by our previous work with amp design and deck design stuff that we did with ALO Audio, right? And so that's where ours are really using high quality internal components and being very rigorous about our design. Um, then we can make a really like consistent product. So we'll print the interior in various forms. We do the sub-assembly. Uh, those sub-assemblies are tested. Then we combine the sub-assemblies into a shell before the lid is on. Then we do another test to make sure that it's okay. We button it up. We do the test. Uh, we do the fill it with um, uh, epoxy to make make sure that everything it, it has a dampening quality, but it also keeps everything in place very firmly. Um, as a final step, then the lid's put on. Then it goes to pairing. 
So depending on what we do, typically we'll build it in like a pool of um, usually 30 pieces, depending on what the model is. So top end pieces will be less, you know, maybe 10 pieces up to, you know, up to maybe 40 pieces at a time, right? So we'll build a, a bunch of them and then we'll pair them individually. So we go with a right and then you go all of the lefts, you know, and then you pair it off. And so that our frequency responses uh, are really like left and right in any given pair are extremely tight. Like they, they should be, uh, each model has its own spec, but they should be almost right on top of each other. And that sets us apart from a lot of other earphone companies who simply build their earphones and then potentially bin them, potentially rely on the specification of the driver, you know, to do the pairing. But when you combine a bunch of drivers, you just inevitably get some variance, you know, just you add up tolerance of every part together. So I think it's a really cool uh, way to do it, you know. It's very time, you know, uh, consuming, but it, it makes for a better product for, for the person who ends up using it.